It all started with 3,542 teams, all with the hopes of claiming a semblance of accomplishment in the world of CSGO. And of those 3,542 teams, only 32 progressed to the minors, while the rest fell to waste in the abyss of underachievement. combat. 24 emerged, stepping into the coveted major. While eight blew into the winds of the defeat. with one goal to crown the current king of Counter-Strike. Just one day, one game now separates us from the coronation. Two candidates, the unstoppable Astralis, with structure and restraint like no one else, and the raw firepower and brilliance of Na'Vi! The world's number one and number two. Enter the SSE Arena live from London. It is the Face It Major, and I am so goddamn excited. It's none other than Chad Sponge Birch. We'll give him one more warm welcome, please, Wembley. You're amazing. Thank you so much. And of course, Sean Gares as well. They used to hold the mouse and keyboard. Now they put the mic in their face and talk about the others. Sean, this is the big one. Yeah, this is. And I can't remember the last time we had the number one in two teams battling in the major finals. We get to watch them in a best of three to determine who is the number one team in the world. Yeah, concrete. It, it's actually happening. We've got number one, number two, grand final, a million dollars. It's all here, Chad. Everything you need. With two very distinct play styles, right? The way that Astralis approached the game to the way that the guys from Na'Vi approached the game. It's going to be a clash. We've already seen it once in this tournament. The fact that we get it again, and we get to see if Astralis can actually establish that era that we've been talking about, that's going to be absolutely huge. I mean, it has been up in the air of like, oh, some people think, yes, the Astralis era is here. So, some say that we need another major. Well, perhaps it will be locked in stone, Sean, should they pick this one up. Yeah, I mean, both of these teams have won countless titles over the last year. Navi won three in a row in the middle of summer. Astralis have won five dating back to last year. These teams are at the top of their game. Their map pools are similar. Their styles are so different, though, like Chad said. Navi depending heavily on their individual aimers. Astralis using that teamwork and tactics. 
So this is definitely a brawl and a clash. It is, it is. And if you want to get involved and join the conversation, you can do so with the hashtag FaceItMajor. Nice and easy to let us know what you're watching. Who's taking this one? We were just talking to some of the fans, and it does seem straight up 50-50 again. I mean, I, I don't think we, I've been, I feel like a broken record, but there is clear fans for both sides stepping into this one. Well, look, there's a lot of support for Na'Vi, and I think that's the heart, you know, the way that these guys play the game. It excites the crowd, where a lot of people keep saying that Astralis play boring Counter-Strike. Oh. And once again, I'm going to tell everybody, it's not boring Counter-Strike, Counter it's the most beautiful Counter-Strike. Counter-Strike I've ever seen, and I hope we get more of it today. Yes, and of course, beautiful Counter-Strike has been the name of the game for so many years now. In fact, we have your top eight major players from the history of those majors all time. And already we can see some recognizable faces. Simple, his performance is at the major. It is certainly worthy of a tri trophy. He's been climbing. I call Simple the god of Counter-Strike. I call him the greatest player to ever <laughs> touch the game. His awareness and his approach and his style and flair while doing it, it's like none other. Sure, we talk about Cold Zero up in the top three. Sure, we talk about Nico up there as well. But the fact of the matter is, Simple for me, if he grabs this major trophy, if he continues this rampage, yeah. he has to go down as the greatest Counter-Strike player of all time. He clashed with Cold Zero, who holds the top spot, and we can see how that worked out to put Na'Vi in that final. And both two zeros as well, Sean. Both of those semi-finals seemed rather clear-cut. Yeah, and Simple and Electronic coming up huge time. Time and time again, this event for, for Navi, the big players are shining. Simple with a 1.48 rating. That's almost unheard of on a, on a major level, this deep into the major. Electronic right behind him, and then Flamey right behind him. The top three performers so far from this major, all on Navi. And they're all stepping onto that stage in just a moment's time. Well, actually, the top five are all stepping onto this stage, because then it goes Device and Magic's in the fourth and fifth spots, respectively. So it means that we have the best performers from this tournament all going head to head. Not only that, we have five players who have already lifted major trophies split between the two teams. Four from Astralis and obviously Zeus from Na'Vi. Simple's been up there, tried before. He hasn't been able to do it. Let's see if he can get it this time. Oh my goodness, there is just so many storylines. We'll continue to unravel them as this death does continue. But first, if we want to get a grand final started, we need teams. And I think Wembley, you know what to do. When it's over, the time that we spend just a memory. It's been too long to try What is the recipe for a compelling grand final of CSGO? Well, you want a dash of tension. You want a sprinkle of suspense. And lastly, you want a monstrous dose of carnage. Well, tonight, that's exactly what you're going to get. Can you see that the sky is falling? Because here we go. The powerhouse Navi versus the juggernaut Astralis. It's showtime, Wembley. London, bring the noise for Astralis. And Navi! Your grand finalists for Astralis, Device, Dupree, Zipex, Glaive, and Magisk. For Navi, Edward, Flamey, Simple, Zeus, and Electronic. Wembley, they're stepping into those booths. This is your chance. Let them hear you. A 
A grand final that I just cannot contain my excitement for. It's a clash of styles, it's a clash of legends and names. You don't so often get to see clash with so much on the line. You can't deny how the team from Australis got to this point. This run for them has taken on FaZe, Liquid, and now they have to beat Na'Vi if they want to lift the trophy. They haven't done it the easy way, but they've made it look easy, and that's something to really attest to for these guys. Yeah, I mean, it's just going to be beautiful. Na'Vi, as, as a storyline in themselves, we're about to take a closer look at them, Sean. It's just, it's been a journey of, of low lows and incredibly high highs. No one's quite done it like Na'Vi. Yeah, when they finally pieced together the roster, they brought Zeus back from Gambit. We all expected instant success after that major win from right. Zeus. And it wasn't the case. It wasn't the case. And they brought in Electronic. They still struggled right off the bat. Everyone questioned that pickup. Electronic being a young up-and-comer. And somehow he's managed to flourish in the system. And they brought Navi now three titles in, yeah. the, in the span of the summer. So yeah, they're definitely up there now. Yeah, now aiming for the big one, of course. The major trophy sitting between their boots right now. Let's focus on Navi first. Your inner focus should be to improve yourself. Whew. We finally did it. We passed the group stage. It's feel great. Feel great to be a legend again. I've never been in face of tournaments. This is my first time, but I believe it's gonna be huge. You should work on yourself every day, all the all your free time. Because this is the main goal for every team and every player to win a major. All your energy should be on winning of the major. I need to do unexpected things and some magic. Yes, Na'Vi, their Counter-Strike certainly doesn't put you to sleep because they've got some names like no other. Simple, one of the names that we're going to be talking an awful lot about alongside the likes of Electronic and Flamey, this trio which brings the fire and to waft that flame is Edward and Zeus, who we, actually we have been giving a whole lot of credit to. Everyone has been pulling their weight to get them here. Every piece of this puzzle has actually been firing on all cylinders with crunch moments and it's the, you know it hasn't been the simple show. Everybody has been chiming in and that is what's so impressive. When this roster first came together, we were really worried about it not actually living up to the hype. But now, with a bit of time, with a bit of patience, and a couple of fights in between, this Na'Vi roster has finally realized its full potential. And can they give Simple a major trophy here? It was none other than NIP, FaZe, Fnatic, Big Clan, and MIBR all fell by the wayside to this Na'Vi roster. Those are no slouches. Those are names that even have lifted trophies before, and Na'Vi steamrolled them. Yeah, I would argue before the playoff stage, Na'Vi might have had the hardest route to get to the playoff stage, which is why Edward was so happy that they made it out of that, that initial group stage. Yeah. They, they actually had to play Astralis earlier in this tournament. We can't forget that. They lost 16-13. That was a map that could have literally gone either way. Yep. I think when you look at this team and the way that they approached the game early, it was just to, to break you, you know, break your economy, keep yeah. the pressure on, allow the stars to get those rifles in their hands no matter what, and destroy you. That tapered off, that changed. They showed some structure, they showed some poise. Their spacing's been fantastic. Their trading is what has gotten to them to this point. They are the best in 4v5 scenarios, and that's because their trading has been so on point. Yes, and of course, their raw aim as well. I think there's a demo to back this one up called Aim Factor. You want to talk to me about this one? Yeah, yeah. So this is actually on their Dust2 match against Big. And we, here we see Electronic doing what he does best, oh, fragging yeah. out. It's something so simple, just a pop flash catwalk right as the smoke fades, perfect timing, gets that initial kill, and he actually re-peaks for more. And that's something that separates Na'Vi from Astralis. This is a huge individual play. And this is something we can see out of Na'Vi time and time again. Constantly going for more kills, trusting their aim, trusting their superstars. Whereas Astralis, they might play the situation p passive and not re peek into that angle. There's only a couple of players on that Astralis this roster. This last shot. Yeah, it's Ooh. quite spicy, isn't it? Who do it time and time again. And Dupree's been the man stepping up for Astralis when the flare's been needed. But it feels like almost everybody on this Navi roster has been able to do it. Even Zeus has had moments where those multi kill impact rounds have been hugely pivotal. 
I'm looking at the head-to-head, -head, and as a core, as organizations, they have played so much Counter-Strike against one another. Yeah. We're looking at like 60 games. Yeah, in, in 2018 alone, they played on land nine maps of Counter-Strike. Navi's won four, Astralis has won five. This is about as close as it gets when it comes to a one and two. And the 16-14 game at this major already. This is just almost guaranteed to be close blockbuster Counter-Strike. Now we have to talk about their opponents. It's Astralis. We'll take this next. Thanks for watching us, guys. Uh, I really appreciate all the great comments you're giving us. Um, it feels great to, to play under the Astralis banner, and I hope we can uh, go all the way in this major. I'm extremely proud of my team and myself to, to finally be here. A roster formed out of a fantastic fire. They lost Kirby, bring in Magisk, and if anything, they just got scarier to play in the server. Something else that's usually impressive with this roster is four out of the five of them have already felt what it's like to lift a major trophy, have already felt what it's like to climb to the top of the mountain and be crowned world champions. I think here with their style, their percentage plays, the fact that they are able to play flary when they need to, this is one of the best Counter-Strike rosters I think that I've ever seen touch the game. It's a very short list of teams that have got double majors, Sean. It is indeed. And this is one of those teams where you almost want to hate them because they're so good as a team. They <laughs> always play the percentage situations. It's like almost the New England Patriots in football. It, it's so easy to dislike this team because they are so good. <laughs> Yes, I think that's actually such an interesting discussion. When we say they play the percentages, and I think it has to be said, if ever, if ever we were going to talk about it again, Chad, it would be in the grand final. Playing the percentages, every time I watch, even a lot of the pro players that I get to work with and share desks with, they just get irritated by how smart every decision made by the Astralis players is. They don't take fights they shouldn't. They limit their mistakes, you know? When they know that they've lost a battle, they're happy to save and fight again another day. When they know that they shouldn't overpeak a situation and wait for a teammate, they will. But the really interesting fact for me is players like Dupree even can make those decisions but seem to find holes and gaps to make the flary moves. It doesn't make sense and it shouldn't work, but it does. And the fact of the matter is that structure, I guess, has allowed him to make those plays and at least make that impact in this tournament. Yeah, and one other thing that we have to talk about is the demo selective regarding Force Spy. Sean, you want to explain this one? Yeah, so I, I, I chose this demo because this is a new side to Astralis. As Chad says, they're, they're showing that they can brawl now. They, they're willing to make these Force Spies. They went back and forth in this game against Liquid, oh, wow, and this yeah. is the last round of the half. Glaive throws a simple pop flash through the roof. It blinds Twist, who's that player you see in heaven. And just the, the way that they take the bomb site is so gorgeous. The guy swinging front silo with the guy peeking hut and the guy coming out door simultaneously. The smoke goes down. And then their spacing to hold heaven is perfect. So that way the trade would happen. They have a, a nice little twist boosting into the rafters. It's just such a... So many small details go into making a, a round like this happen. It's like they've already thought five, six, seven steps ahead. When you get into that bomb site almost for free, they've already considered doing the boost into the rafter. A lot of teams would be flustered, they'd be looking for kills, they'd be running around the bomb site trying to get the best positions. But the preparation that Astralis do means whenever they get into a scenario, everybody knows how to react, everybody knows what that percentage play is, what the most likely way to win a round would be, and the best way about going about it. Yeah, and I mean, that's what's so cool about the Astralis boys and the thoughts from Na'Vi, is that they have such clear and distinct styles. This Brawl, though, this is something that I find very interesting. How does that interact with Na'Vi when they are known for putting their foot on your throat when you're down? Na'Vi is what I like to call a dirty team. Okay. They, they <laughs> like to buy with the lowest amounts of money, two threes with one AK. You know, Simple will have a CZ or a Deagle, and you'll see Edward running around with an AK, and you're wondering, where's this going? And they always make it work. They yeah. always break your economy. They'll keep trying and trying and trying. And 
Schwalz is going to have to win rounds like that if they want to win this best of three. But I'm sitting next to Sean Gares and Sponge, who both have previously told me, oh, forced by culture, it's bad, you know, look at the French, look at where that, where that got them. Why are we praising Na'Vi for it? Is it because they get away with it? It's because they make it work in any scenario. It isn't just run and gun. It's not buy tech nines and run over the boost and hope you find some lucky kills or players out of yeah. position. It's working zones of the map. It's playing the, the, you know, the rotations. It's making sure when they get that kill, they know how to capitalize as a unit. And the fact that they can do that, even if they don't win the round, they just do so much economic damage. And yeah. that's going to force you to play mistakes. You won't have a Molotov for one of your protocols. You, know, you won't have a smoke to block off a choke point. And when that happens, they slip on in and they punish you. Yeah, it is going to be so much fun to watch. I'm already getting excited. We're getting closer to game time. A quick reminder of one of our sponsors while we're here. It's called epics.gg. You can collect your favorite CSGO pros, such as the ones taken to the stage. You can do it on your phone or head to the website, epics.gg. Give them a wave, Wembley. Give them a wave. Let them hear you. Bet they wish they were here now. The grand final's on their way. Oh, my God. First, let's take a look at the head-to-head. -head. Two names, and I'm so intrigued to see how these two interact and intersect during this major final. How could we not pick Simple, the god of Counter-Strike, and Device, one of the best AWP players in the world? The way that he roams around in the backyard of Train, the way that he, you know, re-peaks corners, just his approach to, I guess, the professionalism of being a star author is something we haven't seen, whereas Simple is like, I'm gonna do everything outside of the box, make it look easy and make it work, and be the best player in the world with pistols, rifles, clutching, whatever you want, he can do it. So this toe-to-toe, -to -toe, yeah. Device is gonna have to do everything he normally does, while we hope Simple elevates his level even more. And I mean, sure, Sean, just to add on to that, we have to address that, you know, look at those ratings. Device has been, we call him consistent. He doesn't necessarily have to have the flair to be one of those highest rated players. No, Device has been up there for years now. He's, you almost forget how young he is yeah. because he's been at the top of the scene for so long. But Simple is unlike any player I have ever seen in my life. He is by far the best Counter-Strike player I have ever seen. And not a single major trophy in his cabinet to back that up. Perhaps today here live from London. A quick reminder that you guys can let us know who you think's taking this one. I said it feels like a 50-50, at least from the people I've spoken to here in the SSE. But you can let us know on the Upcomer app. It's www.com, upcomer.com. Nice and easy, you can do that. And it looks like 57 to 43. Yeah, that sounds about right. A couple of people playing with their noggins there. I think, you know, it has to be a heart versus head kind of discussion here. If you don't go with Astralis based off of how professional, how well-rounded the brand of Counter-Strike they bring, then, you know, you're really hoping that Electronic and Simple can continue to play at that level. Yeah. You know that Astralis can do it. The question is, this is Electronic's first time in a grand final. There's lots of pressure on him. This is new. This is a whole new experience for Electronic. I don't think I've ever seen that man look under pressure, but the vetoes is where that pressure starts to mount. Lots of fun Ooh. we can have with this one. Neither team likes to play cash, but the fact of the matter is Astralis are happy to let it through and, and maybe take the risk because it's Navi's perm, perma ban. But no, uh, train Navi? again. Did no, Navi? That's, that's Astralis. Oh, that's Astralis. That's okay. Astralis's ban. And it, yeah, and then, that's a standard okay, ban so right there. Navi banned cash. Okay, so that's kind of what we expected out of the two teams. But what now, Sean? And Astralis picks Nuke. And this is a map they're 18 and 0 on in their last 18. Navi is 0 and 3 against them this year. Oh. So they're part of that 0 and 18. But Navi is an extremely strong nuke team, and the overpass pick comes from Navi. This is kind of expected. I'm really curious to see because historically Astralis have been a fantastic team on overpass. They had a lot of innovation that execute on B that I talked about time and time again, Alex. The fact is, though, maybe Navi feel that there has been a bit of a weakness in the Astralis camp on that map because it hasn't been something they've been leaning to. Not something they've really been picking in many of their matchups. Dust 2's going to go out. We've seen a lot more of that in the Legends stage. We but have. So that leaves us with Inferno, or we see Mirage? I feel it, it's going to, if, if Navi get the choice, they're going to take it to Mirage. Like, so that's a map that they have such a huge win in, percentage in on. In Cologne, though, when the two met up and Navi bested them, we saw Navi take Overpass and Inferno, and that was when Zeus oh. had a huge game. Oh, it's a third map Inferno on a grand oh. final. Of course it is. This is going to be such a good series. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm not complaining at all. As much as I love Mirage, we've seen so much of it, there is a certain air of excitement whenever you see third map Inferno, of course, on the grand final. How many major. overtimes did we have on that map during this tournament so far? Dude, I'm getting flashbacks to Boston as well. That was an, uh, that was yeah. a, that was an, an Inferno to remember. That is a great map, Paul. So overpass, where we did see a Navi looking pretty fly versus MIBR. Now we get to see them do it versus Astralis. If we're going to look at, you know, I guess some wing conditions, right? right now, and yeah. we, we paint Na'Vi as the underdog because they are number two to the number one. 
when you look at you know the, the pistol round conversion rate i've been harping on about this the last two days the fact of the matter is when they do win the pistol round which is you know it's bumped up from yesterday i think they're up in the 60 percent now they convert the second round a hundred percent of the time that is an insane stat we cannot understate that because in counter-strike with how many force buys we see getting one all over the shop if you're able to convert the second most likely they force bolt which means you guaranteed the third and then they go into the first gun round extremely low on utility a map like nuke that's huge because they you know they won't have the smokes they won't have the molotovs yeah. they'll need a different approach to lock down bomb sites and that is something which needs to be factored in here because so how are you going to break that we have astralis's nuke undefeated we have navi on their overpass and then we get inferno between these two if we get to that third it feels too good to be true. And actually, we should probably start talking predictions with our casters. It's going to be a tough one. It's the Grand Finals, our last prediction segment. Hey, Wembley, why don't you say one loud hello to your casters for the Grand Final. It's James Bardolph and DDK. Hello, London. James. Looking really nice outside. James, damn. This little booth. This is not an easy task to predict this one. I mean, look to the upcoming rap, it was like 57-ish. I mean, what, what does that make you say? I don't know, man. I'm throwing all the numbers out of the, out the window. Everything's going out the window. Okay. We've got a simple, we've got an Astralis that's never looked any better. We've got Counter-Strike in London. <laughs> uh, that's not a prediction, Dan. I know it's not a prediction. <laughs> Alex, don't expect me to make sense right now. All right, shut up, Dan. I'm going with Na'Vi. I think it's time for Simple to win a major. It's oh. been way down Ooh. too long. And I think that today is the day. I mean, what better opponent to prove you're the best player in the world and best team than beating Astralis? Uh, Dan, I'm afraid I'm looking okay. at you now. <laughs> second, Actually, do, second time's the second charm, time. I can give you some more time if you'd like. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go Astralis as well. Okay. Right, same Astral for I'm a mess. <laughs> I think this game's gonna be, it's gonna be a mess, Alex. Yeah, you're, you're drunk on Counter Strike. I don't it's true, blame it's you. It's true. Um, over to the panel for a moment, then, Chad. Are you thinking with your heart? Or you're thinking with your head. I've gone against Astralis way too many times you this have. tournament, and every time they've uh, come out on top, I think I have to go with Astralis here. I think oh, just I how well-rounded they looked yesterday, the type of Counter Strike that they were playing, I can see it happening again today. Shawnee. Yeah, I've also gone against Astralis way too many times this event. And I'm going to do it again. I'm going Na'Vi. Oh, I think Simple is going to take this game. I wrote Astralis down this morning, but Simple and Electronic, I'm, I'm looking for them to dominate this series. Oh, and I'm still scared to say mine. I don't, I don't even know yet. Let's check in with our uh, worst analyst, actually. She's yeah. got the lowest percentage. Uh, but let's have a look. Maybe this will be a tale to tell. Maybe Eggs gets it right in the grand finals. Whoa. Okay. Oh, all right. She's just right. getting get her footing. It's a big choice. It to is me the me. biggest decision so far. This is the big one. She can make up for all the errors. She can redeem herself yes. here. She's look I think she's looking at Astralis. Whoa. Whoa. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> another phenomenal. But we just said she gets everything wrong. What do we do now? She's been sandbagging until the finals, <laughs> obviously. She's yeah. been waiting for the finals. Get you all betting the wrong way. Yeah. Taking all that money afterwards. A Counter-Strike shark. Okay, I think I'm going to have to... I mean, I, I have to do this. I have to say Astralis. I, I truly, truly cannot wait to see if Na'Vi can do it. But my, my head is telling me that after predicting Astralis and then the 16 0 MIBR, I just forever... Let, a wound has been left. You can't doubt them. Uh, James, Dan, we'll be checking back in with you when that game goes live. And I can't wait to hear you boys go nuts. <laughs> Cheers, he says to the crowd alone. Uh, okay, so now we can focus on the first map. The first map is Nuke, gentlemen, and I can't see a world where you're going to tell me that Na'Vi can do this. They've, no one has. 18 and 0, undefeated on this map. How would it happen, Chad? Well, we saw yesterday what Liquid were able to do on the low buys. It was quite messy, actually, yeah. from the team of Astralis when they were taking the lower bomb side. Also in Yard, there were some really cool kills by Naf with the Deagle, twisted a lot of damage. So they can be pressure points because if Liquid can do it, Na'Vi are actually the best team in the world at yes. those kind of rounds. So that means that if they can replicate this and then close down some gun round scenarios, they can get on top of that economy. They also get to start on the CT side in this situation. True. <laughs> Look, the more impressive thing about this Astralis stat on Nuke is the majority of the time they pick it, which means the majority of the time they start on the T side. If you're winning that map time and time again from the T side, it means you have a huge amount of depth. Wow. It means that you're super prepared with a lot of different strategies. And we saw a couple of new looks come out yesterday, especially with top hits, how much control they were getting under, the protocols taking that part of the map. So you need to stifle them. You need to make sure that they can't get map control. But you've also told me that Na'Vi, when they win the pistol, they always convert to the first three. If that's on the CT side of Nuke, there's some money, Sean, and that could, that could get the ball rolling. I definitely think so. I think Simple can control the outside yard, secret, ramp, 
and maybe upper. <laughs> what, on his own? Well, on his own? <laughs> yes, he, they will float him around the map the entire CT half, and he will not have a solid spot, and that's something that could catch Astralis off guard, because we didn't really get to see that yesterday out of Nitro. Hmm. I mean, that's something to keep our eyes on as well. Let's not forget, you've got Electronic, who if you want to set up a turret, you just say Electronic, and you just say a call-out ramp, and he's done. He well, sets up. Yeah, well, that's the thing with this kid, right? But the problem here with him is, and if he comes out here and he plays the same form of Counter-Strike we've seen in the rest of the tournament, he's a legitimate top-tier, top-five Counter-Strike player in the world right now. Because this is the biggest pressure he's ever been under on a stage like this. You have to factor that in. When you look in the booth on the other side, like I said, four of them have already won a trophy like this. And someone to focus on now is the man who's going to be doing a lot of the talking in that booth. A pat on the back from Electronic, it's Zeus. What a story from Zeus. I mean, this is an in-game leader who left the Na'Vi team behind, left the jersey behind, and lifted a trophy with another roster. Now yes. he's back and he's in another grand final. There has to be some praise given here. So many doubters, too, over the years for Zeus. He, he's historically put up low numbers as a fragger, but his teams are always up at the top. You cannot argue that he is not a good in-game in leader. His teams produce results. Their trading is always excellent, and their map pools are very deep. And he is a leader. He yeah. is that you know, leader you look to. He's loud, he's proud, he gets in your face. These guys argue, but they still make it work. And that's so impressive with the different styles of Counter-Strike that he's actually you know, put out there over his tenure as a top-tier player. He's played really slow, very strat-heavy. You know, now they play a lot looser. He works with the tools that he's got. He gets the best out of them time and time again. Going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Glaive, who took over from Gar uh, Carrigan. Yeah. That's you know, a team which was already set up for greatness. He came in and pushed them across the line. Zeus has been building this for some time. Yeah, and you can just see that as, as the huddles are still going, on at least for Na'Vi that it's, it's just the last couple of words perhaps going over the first round perhaps talking about the fact that you have to play like you're in your living room you can't remember you can't remember you're in front of thousands live who are going to be making a ruckus as well as of course the hundreds of thousands watching at home Sean that that you can't have that in your head I don't think they will these are experienced veterans they went through this in Cologne a, a month ago almost against Astralis they've been there they've done that they've put Played tight games with the Shawls too. These aren't these aren't blowouts by any means. Every game is very close, goes down to the wire. So I don't think we'll see any shaking nerves from out of Navi. Edwards glancing at the crowd, and I think one more time, London. I would love it if we could get those flashlights out, just show them how many of you are here to watch them do what they do best. They can't hear you, but they sure as hell can see you. Let me see those lights. That's beautiful, and the players are taking to their seats which means only one thing. I want to hear you, Wembley, on the count of three. It's time for your casters to take over. One, two, three! James Dan, it's over to you! Thank you so much, Alex. Yes, Wembley, it is time! Astralis and Na'Vi about to go toe-to-toe -to -toe here, James. My goodness. These two teams have looked unstoppable all the way through to this point. They were destined to be in this position here in London. I am so excited. I think Alex painted it well. I'm, I'm drunk on Counter-Strike right now. Rank one versus rank two. This is going to be quite a match of Counter-Strike. Starting on Nuke of all things, and that's only a few seconds away. So take a deep breath, ladies and gentlemen. Na'Vi are gonna be starting on the CT side, Astralis on the T side, and I think you know what time it is. London makes some noise in this bitch! <laughs> right, so the crowd's ready, James. Our teams are ready. The countdown's begun. I cannot wait to see which way this one goes. Astralis on that T side, as mentioned. They're gonna have some grenades there on Glade and Zipex as we get into this T pistol. Now it's gonna be really interesting to see if they're gonna play this one simple or if they're gonna hit hard straight into the upper bomb site. Astralis, where are you right now? And Ooh. Oh, well, where's Na'Vi? Na'Vi's in CT oh, spawn there. So we have a false start. That's the oh, way we love to they, start a grand final. Us all. Oh. We've all been trolled, James. Not just yet, lads. Not just yet. Trollerino trying to drop some, uh, some momentum early. Hopefully this gets sorted soon. Yes, James, that would be That would be fantastic, That'd okay. Be lovely. There we go, the round has been restored. Maybe somebody bought dual Bretters by mistake. Who knows, but uh, I think we'll be into this one soon. So, Na'Vi versus Astralis. It could, it could really go either way, but for me, it will be such a shame to see a Simple leave another final without the championship. I think he deserves it. Okay, so uh, <laughs> someone forgot to connect to the communication server. That is why we have a good Hold on, lads. I don't think I've ticked all the boxes. These guys are professionals, Jeps. 
we will see them in action very soon indeed. Quick alt tab and we should be good to go. Shout out to the keyboards. Always nice to see a keyboard. You brought, what, six keyboards to the show match today? Oh, there's Get Right's head. I signed his forehead earlier. <laughs> right. He didn't reply to me. James, which way is this one going to go? We've got The, the chicken here. went for Na'Vi there. I, well, yes. So I think that says it all. But this is, this is Nuke James. No one has been seen really challenging Astralis, already pushing them into that top gear just yet. And one thing we know about Na'Vi, Simple said it before, they love the emotional games. They really bring their best when the going gets tough and it can't get tougher than this. Finally, it's time to start the damn match. Everyone's on the team speak. Here we go. Astralis will be on the offensive. The desk showed how dangerous they can be on this T side. And they've got the grenades again. Glaive and Zipex have nasty plans in mind for Na'Vi. You have full plays of Kevlar. It's used as a kit if necessary. And Astralis will try to make it so. Yeah, looking like they just want to go straight outside, down secret. Electronic will spot it though, which Astralis likely know that that will be the case. They don't care. They're just going to keep barreling down as quickly as they can into that lower bomb site. Flamey away, simple in position as well. Astralis, they know they are expected. They know that Na'Vi have rotated lower. Will they try to play them for falls? Or will they just still try to use that firepower and make it work regardless? Flamey plays around the smoke, pops one. More to be had here as he tries to get a glaive. I don't know how Astralis can get this bomb down right now. Na'Vi players everywhere. Another one coming in here. This is looking way too easy for Na'Vi so far. Just Dupree alone. Three kills for Flamey. Looking like he's invisible at the moment, but not anymore. Dupree's done something, but not enough. Na'Vi got off to a solid CT pistol round. That looks very comfortable indeed. They had expectation of Astralis and they managed to deal with it. And of course, Astralis have to be the most studied team in Counter-Strike. How do they keep surprising their opponent? It's a very good point, James. One of the reasons of their consistency has been that their basics, their fundamentals are so untouchable, their defaults... Well, there's no one that can come close to them. And that is one of the secrets of Astralis and their success in Na'Vi. Looking to make things dirty here, as Sean said, that they are the team to to rip them apart. We'll see if they can get off to a good start here. Or if these Deagles, these CZ, well, this CZ and the Scout that Astralis have forced brought into, these are going to provide some problems. Na'Vi need that clean start. They've got to get a good economy straight away. Will he see one? Will he see two? Glaive holding an angle, but you could argue that Electronic is better equipped. Now, this is a full investment from Astralis. They've left no money for AWPs. Everybody's in to try and get this one. Well, that was a close one. Device down to one HP. Here's Dupree taken out on top of the roof. Nuke more awkward now outside than it used to be. Electronic still has a secret position, which means that Na'Vi can focus on A. Although Simple's now been picked off. But he's not the most, always the most dangerous person on Na'Vi. You have Electronic as well. Very dangerous indeed. Flamey with the... Oh, my! Okay, maybe there's a plant in this three on three. This could get dangerous for Navi. Yeah, Zipex looking quite savage so far with that Deagle, very fast. And now Zeus asking some questions in the lower bomb side. We'll spot one, and there's the bomb as well. Down on the floor, 30 seconds to go. Zipex holds the angle. Looking to be a turret, but Device, he has to go get the bomb. One HP, not good enough. Zipex still doing more damage, though. Caught out in the open. Deagle comes back out in time. Still has some bullets to throw at Zeus, but Zeus will get it done, Na'Vi will clean up the round, but <laughs> that round looked dangerous. Yeah, three players lost for Na'Vi. That's a pretty good round for Astralis. It's all about the impact to the CET economy once you lose the pistol. Now, once Astralis come to their buy rounds, if they are able to be successful, then those kills will most certainly pay off. For now, Na'Vi will continue with three SMGs, and we see no investment from Astralis whatsoever in this round. Five Glocks. Five meat shields, maybe a bomb plant would be nice. But again, they, they can still try to focus on thinning out the utility for Na'Vi. Even if they don't get a kill, they can make them spend their grenades, those expensive $600 incendiaries. Plenty to uh, spend money on for the next round for Na'Vi if Astralis give them the time to burn.
Yeah, it's a really good point, especially as mentioned, both these teams just do damage in every single round and it can be the difference between a rifle now or later on. It does seem like things will be cleaned up and they actually get a kill out of these Glocks. Oh, okay, there comes another one. Now Glaive will pick up the bomb again down lower. Surely, oh, I think he's just missed the bomb. Maybe there could have been a chance at a very quick plant, but he will be denied. But still, Na'Vi will lose two players and as you mentioned, they expended a lot of utility in that round. So Astralis, despite having very little, are keeping them on their toes. The buy coming out now for Astralis. Five AK-47s and plenty of grenades. We know they're capable of fast plays. Who knows if we've seen their whole strat bag just yet here on Nuke. Na'Vi will have to be on their toes. For now, they will keep the money together and continue with the two MP9s rather than upgrading to the rifles. Let's see what assault they can get into. Glaive with a smoke early to take away any vision of a sniper rifle. There is one on simple, and the player is close to the CT side already. Astralis and uh, Ninjas, in, Ninjas in Pajamas, two of the more notable teams on the old nuke. But can Na'Vi match Astralis here? Yeah, so we'll see those very late outside smokes covering a path to secret. Now for Na'Vi, they don't 100% know whether or not players are going down there, but they have electronic and a nice off angle trying to keep tabs on this. Let's see if he's going to be able to deal with these AKs. He has the MP9. They're going to line up potentially. No, there comes a very nice peek from device. Expectant, cognizant, and Astralis will move forwards down to that lower bomb site. Ramp is in the control of the CTs, and control is in control. That room there is referred to as control, but Flamey gets taken out of there. Molotov on the more important side. It's a cheeky peek from Glaive. He's blind, but he will manage to escape. And oh dear, Dupree will ring the bell of Simple. And that leaves only two Na'Vi players left. And now you start to wonder already about the economy for the Na'Vi side. The first buy round for Astralis. They've not lost a single player. Yes, that is very troublesome. Can Edward hold on to his M4? And will we be seeing any AWPs here from Na'Vi? Might be a while. We'll have to wait and see and how much money they have in the next round. I don't think they have enough with this loss bonus. So that's a worrying sign straight away. And that goes to show, just as you mentioned, James, in the Glock round, five Glocks, they have nothing. They, they kick two kills somehow to Astralis, and they burn all that utility. And that's why Na'Vi now don't really have any security going into the next round after losing this one. So Astralis, despite that shaky start, still looking like they might just be in control of Nuke. Moving into round five, you will soon see how important the kills in round two were for Astralis and what they've done to the CT economy. They're actually going to buy up Na'Vi, but they're going to buy with uh, very limited supply. They have a UMP instead of a rifle and it's used on the auto shotgun. It can be used well at close range. It was uh, had an a better spread, an improved spread from the devs, but still not an ideal situation here for Na'Vi. For those of you new to the game, the outlines of the players are just for spectators. The players cannot see that, just so we can see where everybody is. Right then, will we see a more aggressive Na'Vi here on Nuke? Because they didn't really have the grenades to hold as much map control as they otherwise might have liked to. And we can see Dupree actually just making a lot of noise on the silo. I think they're trying to suggest perhaps maybe there's more players outside than they may, may intend to finish around with. We'll have to see how it will develop here for Astralis. Electronic with a very fine angle there from the garage. He's fairly safe in that position. And lots of noise has been made outside for Astralis so far. But they've yet to really push all that far. And you can see that they start to go and check the forward positions once again. Perhaps trying to bait out a reaction from Na'Vi. Knowing that Na'Vi don't have a lot, well, better weaponry than they do, that maybe Na'Vi might take some risks. They're really trying to force those risks. But Na'Vi holds strong so far. Simple was in the ramp area or the B area. As you can see, he's moved back to a more passive position. So he can retreat without, without getting trade fragged. You can see four Astralis players moving together. If you're wondering why, they're trying to use the numbers game to abuse the CTs. We'll have to defend with less numbers, but so far so good for the CTs. Two kills, electronic and simple, of course. Dupree down low, but it's 2K for him. Now what do they do? 25 seconds on the clock. Where are the rest of the CTs? Where is it safe to plant the bomb? Flamey long range with the UMP, it's not exactly ideal. He does have a teammate to come in to support him in Electronic with the M4, but very limited utility here. Some strong angles held by Astralis post-plant. Again, there is some time here to work something, but it's going to be very difficult. And we'll, Edward will make his way in on the flank, looking to see if he can somehow get something done as he moves forwards. It might be his play that can set his team forwards, or perhaps Electronic. Electronic causing a distraction. Edward 
Perfect. Gets to flank off. Now just to fight. in a one versus two. He can't do it, but Edward can. And Na'Vi shut down Astralis after just losing the round. Is there time to defuse the bomb though? Because he doesn't have a kit. It's going to be a close one. I'm not sure if he's got it. Oh! Oh, oh no! Oh, no! so close! Only Edward gets away just in case. He picked up the sniper rifle and took it to a safe haven. But they were like 0.3 seconds away from oh winning my that God. one. And again, you go back to round number two. Astralis did that, so much damage. Navi has the cut corners. The last three players at the very least don't have a diffuse kit, and that's what causes them to lose the round. So again, it is the, the, um, the impact of Astralis early on in these rounds which allows them to win that round later on. I can't believe it, James. It looked like it was so smooth for Na'Vi, just so shy of time, but we do get a tactical timeout coming in from Na'Vi to decide what to do with this situation. They have a very limited amount of money across the remaining players, around $2,500 and less, but simple. He saved an AWP, he has an AWP, and that is perhaps always a reason to just force by it. Yeah, well, um, I think it might be hard, though, on Nuke, because obviously if you have a map like Inferno, where you've got the, the funnel choke points, if you will, you can rotate to a different position and try and surprise people, but that might not be the easiest thing to do, and he would really have to increase his risk percentage to be effective if it was, if it was just a hero AWP. But again, we've got the SMGs, and there are places where they can be put to good use. We've got a fast play into the squeaky door position. It's been blown off, but you still has the high ground for now. But Zipex will catch him off guard. More CTs in the A site, though, but the trades go the way of Astralis. Two players left simple, dropping the bomb for now. And now he's one versus three. He can't peek this forever. He's got to find something and get away. Oh, he's going for the no-scope, but that will be a nice spread of that Molotov, and it will force him back. Yeah, this doesn't seem like there could be too much for Simple to accomplish here. He has to start considering, do I just save this up into the next round and maybe try and do something different? Try to reset it with the AWP, and it might just be the case here as he holds the ramp position. And you can see that Na'Vi even had a good setup to defend that upper bomb site. The only thing that was open was main, and Astralis had such a fast timing. And then he started with that first kill on Zeus on the hut position, and then the defense started to topple. So very well-selected rounds chosen by Astralis. But again, simple is always the X factor, James, and he has an AWP still. He has, but he's had an AWP for more than one round now, I think, and uh, hasn't really helped them much has to be said, they won the pistol. Beyond that, it's essentially a 3-0 scoreline for Astralis. Not much going the way of Na'Vi at the moment. Astralis are imposing their will. There is the man Zonic. After every draw throughout this tournament, that man spends hours counter-stratting their opponents every single time. Very integral part to the Astralis team, who have now tied the score and are in a much better situation. They've got money for a second buy if they are to lose a round. And now we have that hero AWP. Simple with the sniper rifle, the rest on pistols. Can he do it somehow? Can he find a way? Oh, that's a missed HE. Oh my goodness, it does a lot of damage to his teammates. Device and Zipex a little bit tagged up because of that missed HE. That was supposed to blow open the squeaky door to allow a very fast timing to peek through it to catch anybody coming through main, but... Well, it shouldn't matter too, too much for Astralis. They, of course, have significant advantages in this round, but they know that Simple is somewhere with an AWP. Always a problem, always a consideration, as they start to try to safely take the outside position with those smoke grenades. So as you can see in the top right corner, that is a balcony the CTs could stand on, but the smoke obscures the vision also from the garage, which is opposite Edward, and other places, so... But you never know, with these smokes down, unless you have a CT on these stairs, you don't know if people have gone down or not. So it's really hard to try and position your team, if you are Na'Vi right now, in the right places to deal with what might be happening. If you want to go for that information, it's a risk as well. As you can see, they've only got pistols. Edward looking for a headshot, but he will be the recipient. And now it's a case of try to save the AWP. This is a round which Na'Vi are probably not going to win. And at this point, it might not be worth trying to save the weapon, but Simple's on the ramp, and he's still looking into the B-bomb site. Yeah, maybe he can get a cheeky kill, maybe. Someone will overextend, and Simple can snap them up. But Astral is one of the most disciplined teams. Oh, Zeus, he's been spotted out. Oh, hello, maybe not! But still, Zipex gets the kill, and everything will be fine there for the Danes as they go back to the upper bomb site and get the plants 
in order and simple once again as you say just sort of playing well just battle royale here just trying to survive against the onslaught and once again looks like he will save the orb and if this next round they're gonna have to make it count his teammates will have a full buy it'll be i think the first full on buy we're gonna see from navi in fact the loss bonus will be 2900 they are quickly heading towards max loss bonus which is 3400 but um, all the money in the world may not save them from Astralis, the way things are looking at the moment. Oh, will they spot him? My goodness, oh, they're everywhere, and that's it. Shot straight in the side of the head. Simple's AWP is gone in the most important round, James. Very efficient from Astralis. They allow Na'Vi to take nothing into the next round. Very expensive to buy up on the CT side, but indeed their money is in the right place. Simple with 5,500, if he buys the AWP, he will be light on grenades. Very light indeed. In fact, you have no grenades whatsoever. It was a late buy. I don't know if it was just a late buy or if they were discussing rifles and more grenades, but here we are. He's on the AWP once again. Five for five at the moment is simple. Ooh, we've got vintage plays now opening the squeaky door to have a look into the garage and politely closing it. He has been uh, well raised by his parents. Quite the gentleman. Nani waits. See what moves are made by Astralis, and the longer they wait, maybe the more awkward this becomes. And we can see Astralis are setting up a lot of nades here, pats into that upper bomb site with a set piece. And you can do a lot of very, very solid set pieces into this upper bomb site. Molotov, everything, top of the heart, just the rafters, just make life impossible for the CTs. And oh, the triple nade, Astralis, that is their signature move, it seems. Innovating with moves like that. And that's uh, some of that demo viewing that Zonic has done. Yeah, you can see they had a Molotov on the floor as well, potentially to bait someone into expecting them to push that door and stand in position for those grenades. They're dangling a carrot on a rope, no biters this time. Na'Vi still with five alive, trying to hold on to that smoke for as long as possible because it could be crucial. Na'Vi almost out of utility. In its entirety, it's going to be very difficult to hold a fast rush without counter utility and Glaive. We'll make a quick move here towards the ramp, start to suggest some pressure, some presence. And then he backs away again. Na'Vi still not sure exactly what's going on right now, but here come the grenades and Astralis, they have no more time. They've got to commit with this and push forwards and Device opens things up with the first frag. Edward up high on the rafters. My God, Glaive, that's fantastic, Zeus. Can he be better? That's one down, more to go as he tries to swing around the side. He's successful, but 10 seconds to plant the bomb. Can Zeus do this? Can he survive? No, Dupree shuts it down. And Astralis with a very slow round, play it perfectly from start to finish takes as long as it takes but they move in with confidence what an entry from glaive almost looking directly up and shooting straight in the face there we are, there we have electronic getting punished for looking for information wondering what astralis were up to surely somewhere there's a gap in the defenses but apparently not at this point doesn't really matter how many astralis players are lost because they are winning every single round and indeed navi are now at maximum loss bonus this means that between their buys, they've got enough money to buy Kevlar and a pistol, the odd grenade here or there. So these rounds can still be dangerous for Astralis. Absolutely. These players lurking all over the place with these pistols. A couple headshots and the round swings. I said we can have a better time of it in this round, being the solitary Deagle. That one shot kill potential at any range as strong as Zipex with the transfer. Ooh. That is fancy stuff there from the man as he falls back to safety. So again, where Zipex was standing there is a, a good position if you're on an anti-eco, because if you get pushed from the door, from the hut, from the squeaky area, you can enable yourself to have a, a one versus one, and you can easily retreat if you need to and have more one versus ones or otherwise. So you don't want to go too deep on your own if you're the only person in that area and most of your team are focusing on the outside. Edward now alone trying to hold on to an AK. He's got two kills in this round, but... Um, Again, it's not really amounting to much here for Na'Vi. Beyond the pistol, we're looking at 0-6 in favour of Astralis. And that does not bode well for the remainder of this half. Absolutely. It is always a dangerous sign to see Zipex having a good game as well. And so far, he looks very focused indeed. And Edward, can he save this AK? Oh, Glaive is close. He hears the stepping. There's the peak. Oh, this surely should go his way. Oh, my God. He finally gets it right at the end there. So keeping that AK into the next round. Always nice to have an AK on that CT side. And as we move into the next round, as you mentioned, James, there's a lot to answer for here for Na'Vi. That transfer was outstanding. Zipex, always my pick 
For those of you in GoTV or the Twitch Premium Pass, Tipex should always be watched. And somebody made a thread recently asking why. The reason why is because he's, his decision making is something that you can learn from. If you look at what he is doing, I think if you ask yourself what you would do in his position, often it will be a more aggressive play. But he can allow you to have a better balance by watching what he does and play for your team instead of playing for yourself. That is why you should always watch Zipex when he's on the server. Yeah, he definitely embodies that sort of consistent approach that Astralis have from a decision-making perspective, for sure. And as we go back into this one again, Na'Vi, they have so much money now as they have the full loss bonus of $3,400. They've got the AWP on simple, the majority of nades that you would need to have a decent CT defense. But they need something more than that. And they got some aggression here, perhaps outside. The forward smokes come in. Electronic into a forward position. There's a flash for him. But Device over the top here, looking to see if he can find this push. But nothing is given away from Na'Vi so far. And in go those triple nades once again to the top of Hop. But you can see that Na'Vi don't have anyone there. The funny thing time. is, in the earlier rounds, Zeus was playing there. Yeah. But now, perhaps Na'Vi are terrified of going there ever because... We're seeing it repeatedly now, so that may condition them to almost have like a, weaky appro a weaker approach to this weaky door position, which may pay off later on. Electronic is on fire, and now he is barbecued by the gun of Glaive. The AK runs hot. Simple moving away from the outside area, so this is a lot of map control which has been taken by Astralis, and it has the effect of denying information for Na'Vi, unless you want to take a risk and look towards the balcony. Otherwise, it is complete guesswork, and you can see from their positions, they don't know what's going on, but Zeus is looking for information. If he holds here, and these players move through at the right time, you might see something. Trying to double pick out of CTs, edging forward is Zipex. Now Magix has to back off. He's in a one versus one, but he's carrying the bomb. He cannot afford to take this duel and lose. Yeah, and there's not much time left, and holding lobby as a CTs is a very aggressive maneuver, and it can really cause problems for the T side because you get so much information and as you mentioned that bomb is oh dear hello didn't expect that one Edwards straight through radio room it's Glaive as Astralis make the move the decision to go towards the upper bomb site and it was a great call as we can see they are flooding in there and it doesn't look like Na'Vi are really in position to do anything here they have just been completely outplayed in this round and device will make it worse as once again it is just it's Save Simulator 2018 here for, for Simple. Yeah, and they're downloading the DLC as well at this point. So you saw the bomb was... Uh, Zipex was in that same position, and Magisk was holding the bomb behind him. Denial of information is very important for a T side. If the CTs figure out where the bomb is going, it makes it easier for them to try and win a round. So he had to not try and trade the frag. Again, if he loses, <sighs> maybe that's what causes Navi to win the round. Simple, almost a highlight, but not quite. Dupree will delete him, rub him out with an eraser. Seven to three, seven rounds in a row for Astralis. Getting to the point where they're going to start to lose money because they're winning all the rounds. Not quite there just yet, but they are close. Now, Na'Vi for the most part have three and a half thousand dollars, but Edward had 8,800. So he spent some money and put an AWP on Simple. And he's bought down, he, he's gone essentially for a force buy, so... Uh, this is, this is some kind of weird half buy from Na'Vi. Can it make the difference? Well, in this level of play, Astralis may never expect this. We'll have to see Magis who goes first. Oh, very nice there. On point on the transfer. Up to Hut. Another head rolling on the ground. Thanks to Magis as more players come into that upper bomb site. But it looks like the reinforcements is going to stop that push for Astralis. And they're going to have to reconsider things. But in a four versus two, they are happy to now just change the pace. Again, you see all the rounds pre prior where Astralis put grenades to that position to try and deter someone from going there. Na'Vi picked the right timing, but still gets shot in the face. And getting shot in the face is a problem in Counter-Strike. And now we have Astralis in a four versus two with yet another bomb plant. We see nothing but success, and Glaive is leading by example, 13 for seven at the moment, top fragging on the server. And of course, he is the in-game leader. And indeed, we, when we saw this veto, we knew that this, would be, this map would be the greatest challenge for Na'Vi, most certainly, as Astralis are just so impeccably good on this map. It's, it is quite, it's quite scary, isn't it, James? It's just, it's just, will, there, will there ever be someone... Get your marshmallows out. ...that can stop them on this map? It's just so beautiful to watch them play. It's you know, just as you know, Sponge was saying on the desk.
Astralis, they don't play boring Counter-Strike. They have so many details, so much nuance to it. And again, as you mentioned, Magic's just, even though they didn't expect it, you also have the individual skill to just back it up if a surprise is coming your way. That is difficult to deal with. And once again, the full buy comes out from Na'Vi, but this time they have a twist. Two sniper rifles for Na'Vi. Flamey has picked up the second one. Very capable with the gun as well, but are Na'Vi capable at this point of even taking a buy round away from Astralis or Nuke? The answer has been no so far. Will it be this that makes a difference? It is, again, just abusing the man advantage. Even if he shoots one of them, which he won't, there are so many more to trade the frag. Taken out immediately. How many does he see on the death cam? What is the response? Electronic caught out of position. And again, it's a landslide so far for Astralis. Edward desperately trying to shoot through a smoke. Nothing doing. Is it safe territory again? Yeah, that... Oh, my goodness. That one-two punch there from Astralis. As you say, so out of position, just caught so off guard by the pace. What a beautiful selection of round once again from Astralis. They are just making all the right calls right now. And would you expect anything less, especially on Nuke from them? And it's hard to watch when you, know, you want to see that double orb set up be the difference for Na'Vi, but they're going to have to you know, rethink that, perhaps. Are we looking at 12-3 in this half? It's, it's, it's time to ask the question. Yeah, it's, uh, it's going that way for sure. Just a few more rounds and Astralis will be there. Na'Vi, will they throw in some aggression? That's another hard adjustment to make against Astralis because they always, they're always looking for that, that aggressive move. They're always looking for that in a way that you're thinking, you know, you, maybe you can surprise them. They always just seem ready for it. So much harassment at the end of the rounds. So much harassment. Na'Vi going to have to change their phone numbers. Nine to three, and what is there to say at this point? Majisk is on, he's just shy of $15,000. So I do think he's probably at the point where he's losing money by winning all the rounds. Because it's not expensive enough for the T side. A landslide for Astralis, nine from nine since the first buy round between the two teams. Let's see how it continues. We've had slow rounds, we've had fast rounds. Again, we've got the door being blown off and that really makes you even more nervous towards that A side. Oh, nice there from Edward. Oh, hello. That is so cool to see. Some detail there from Na'Vi. There's one for YouTube. They'll see some damage to Dupree as well. And he has frequently been found up there on that silo position. Electronic will be completely safe from that flash as Simple is looking for you know, where the blind spot is, which is secret. They don't know Na'Vi, if any Astralis players have made it down there just yet. Astralis have been very good at sort of making it really hard to guess what they're actually doing. They have presence all over the map, sort of suggesting that maybe they're here, maybe they're there. It's a constant guessing game for Na'Vi. I want to see the T's go down secret now because uh, Simple is waiting with an AWP. That's going to be juicy, very juicy indeed. I want to see that kind of exchange. But Astralis are harassing multiple parts of the map at the same time. They've crept into the uh, ramp position as well, as you can see. Instantly, you can't look for information. It's like they're forcing Na'Vi to guess the entire round. If you peek, these AKs are too strong. You're going to get shot in the face. Oh, speaking of which, simple strikes from the cross. Like the snake unseen with the AWP. He can't adjust in time. It's Dupree who makes the kill. And now Astralis once again punch a hole through the defense. Edward with the spray, but he... He is going to be taken away, and that looks like it could be it, because Electronic, he's 1v3, how can he do this? Oh, he's... Oh, my goodness, Electronic! One more to go, though, bomb planted. He will quickly apply the pressure, tapping on that one as he moves forward through the door, trying to guess. But it's going to be made very difficult. He's, uh, he's up against Device, and he's going for the hole. My God, Electronic! That's the play Na'Vi needed to get back in. That's the kind of brilliance you want to see from them. Finally, a round has been won by Na'Vi, but look at what it took. An individual play from Electronic, a well-placed Molotov, and Device, it was his turn to guess. Finally, to get something out of this. Great transfer there from Electronic. Round number four on the board, is that enough? After all of one round of success for Na'Vi, Astralis have taken a timeout. They will not allow them to have any kind of momentum. They'll have to sit and wait for a fair few seconds now. Of course, Astralis not shy on money at all. Na'Vi will have a reasonable amount for this buy. There is the overlay. Device and simple sniping. And Electronic with an AK. I mean, the AKs have been a problem. 
They have been a problem in this half so far. Astralis, can they get to double figures now? The 12-3 is off at the very least. So we have about 880,000 people watching. We want to get to a million. Get your grandmas to get their iPads out and tune in to face it. Well, it's, it's back in this one now. Navi with a quick pause. Electronic, perhaps, with that clutch, he can bring them back into this one. Lift the spirits. And he waits outside. Oh, there's one. And maybe a second falling into the spray, but he can't make it work for the second. But just enough distraction for Edward to have a go of it. But how has Magist done it once again? Ready for anything. Simple now with the AWP looking into the yard, trying to spot out Magist. He's been such a problem, and they can't find him. Two on two. Plenty of time for Astralis. Moving towards the B bomb site. What's the rotation like for the CTs? Flamey is on A for the time being. It's simple. He's in the, in the lobby area, so they are out of position at the moment, charging into the vent position, which means Astralis will hear where they are. They know roughly where Na'Vi are coming from, so they're going to have really good post-plant positions. Device and Dupree. Simple's reload will concede his position yet further. Now, where are the T's? It's a guessing game. We've got a Molotov and a smoke, Na'Vi. May not help him too much. And we've got one T going towards control. That's a great headshot from Device, and that leaves Flamey alone. A smoke on the bomb, a flashbang, a desperation. He doesn't even have a kit. Nothing doing for Na'Vi in that round. Ten rounds for Astralis. Some people pay for this level of domination, Dan. <laughs> that headshot from Device was absolutely disgusting. Oh, man. And Magisk getting the second kill onto Edward. That's, that was the problem. Again, just... Oh, yes. You love to see that. Maybe not if you're Na'Vi, but... If you are an Astralis fan, certainly. Na'Vi fighting with pots and pans in the last round of the first half. Electronic with an M4, everybody else with pistols. 5-7, still good for a one-shot to close range. And there he is, Zeus back on the roof once again. Was avoiding the area for a while. And now he's gone. It's not really working for him, is it? Device popping some windows. Maybe trying to obscure some sound or suggest that players could quietly get to hell underneath the ladder position. So it's anti, it's anti eco territory for Astralis at this point. Four more to find. And you do indeed have to take it carefully. These the Eagles, once again, you really can't understate how dangerous they can be if, not, if care is not taken. And Dupree is moving into a very strong position. If he can get hold of it, the Rafters then opens up the entire upper bomb site for his team. And here he comes, unbeknownst to Na'Vi, and there it is, cleans up that upper bomb site. Simple comes into play with the Deagle, can't get the connections he wants, denied by Zipix, but meanwhile, Electronic's back at it again. A third from him, a 1v2 for the ace, can you believe it? But finally, Magis comes in again, sweeping him down, and that will be the half 11 for Astralis, four for Na'Vi. That is a huge statement of a half for Astralis in the first map of this series it's a grand final of a major and you still wonder if Astralis is smurfing <laughs> that's a very good way to put it James I mean again we do have to you know, temper this result just you know knowing how good Astralis are on this map we knew that this should be the most difficult test in this best of three grand finals for Na'Vi so we do hope they can get the recovery in moving into the second half but they absolutely need this pistol if they do not start with a good economy you really dread what lies in the near future for them right then is four rounds enough for navi to fight back on their t side they will be the aggressors now two players with grenades here electronic and zeus all kevlar for astralis trying to absorb these bullets will it be a fast plane away perhaps from the t's they're getting into lobby at the very least and it seems like grenades are being lined up on the roof we have the door blown off early on and glaive will take it in the face from simple very good start there for Na'Vi and straight down the vent indeed. Looking to outmaneuver Astralis. It would be a good change for them and they're all going to dart down there. Astralis can't know how many players but Zipex is about to spot it out. As you'll now know they're planting on that lower bomb site calling for reinforcements. Can't connect those long range shots. Still a man advantage here for Na'Vi as Device goes in. Oh it's so scary though. Are they lining up for a double peak here? The T's what might be a quadruple peak. They're all here. The trades are massive for Na'Vi. And they look really damn good to win this pistol again. There is no diffuse kit in this round. Zipex needs to get a lot done and the T's are all over the place. How does he even find all of them? There's a crossfire on the side and Edward will be enough. There is a pistol round. That's exactly what Na'Vi needed. 
And just a quick moment, bit of relief there for Na'Vi. Quick moment to breathe. Great start from them indeed, simple kicking things off, and that defense was beautiful there. Putting all the bodies in the right places and all the bullets as well. Good hold, and now Na'Vi, they put it to... I mean, it used to be taken for granted, James, winning rounds against four spies, but when it's the likes of Astralis, a four spy is still very hard to win. I think on some maps, Astralis are the toughest team to win this kind of round against. Inferno, namely, one of them. Considering Astralis' T side, I can't imagine they've overlooked this as a, as a CT on round two after losing the pistol. Those CZs are very dangerous. There are plenty of close quarters positions. You could even have one person on a close corner and somebody just moving up some stairs very quickly, just like that. Speak of the devil, they put it right here. Dupree cleaning up. He is bleaching the floor. Three Navi players left. And what do you do now? There's one gun on the floor. Two guns on the floor, in fact, but they continue to get some frags. Pizipex now, it's his turn with a CZ, although they may try to drain his bullets, but again, his baiting glaive comes out from nowhere, and there are two Navi players left. There's the bomb lost as well. Still, no weapons picked up yet for Astralis, but Flamey has a lot to do, and he won't do it. Astralis are devastating, doesn't matter what they have. You've got to give it to them. Those bait setups were incredible. How, how can something so simple be so effective when you have that perfect timing? You know, all the Astralis players, they are just have this crazy link. The chemistry on that team is definitely really helping in rounds such as this. Just perfect timings on the peaks. We'll take distraction on this angle. The teammate peaks from another. And with those CZs, as you mentioned, James, it is just so strong and beautiful to finish it off with the scout and Snarvi. They are going to have to force by their way back into this one. We've got Deagles out. Good luck with that. Astralis will turn your dreams into nightmares. Bunch of deagles and a CZ for Na'Vi. At this point, they've got two smokes and a HE. They don't even have a flashback. This is a pure aim round. It's a grenade, and Zeus will take a small chunk of damage. Glaive moving up the stairs now of the secret position, but Flamey is waiting for him. When does he choose to peek? Will there be a flashback from his teammates? We've got people advancing their position. Device may have to fall back. Simple going through. He'll get shot in the face, though. But did a tease have the numbers advantage, and finally they'll get some kills. Four on two for Na'Vi. Can they force right back? Turning the tables. Na'Vi, can they close it though? Dupree out in the open with the Galil. It will not work out for him. Zeus will take him out. And now with Magisk as the last man standing with a UMP, it will be tough. The element surprise is key. And well, that's been given away. Picks up the Galil though. And he will rotate, or at least suggest a rotation. But caught up the ladder. That's the close that Na'Vi wanted. Four players survived. That's a lot of weapons collected and Astralis' economy turned to dust. Surely they fix it this time. <laughs> Na'Vi with half the score of their opponent, but a world of opportunity, and a tactical timeout has been called by Astralis. Will they go for the CZ play again? Will they go for setups, bait setups number two? I'm sure they have an album of just photos with smiley faces on where they troll their opponents with CZs, and indeed the CZs will be out once more, so this is another very dangerous round for Astralis, for Na'Vi, sorry. And it's a mind game situation as well between the two in-game leaders. Now we've already shown, uh, you know, Astralis, we've already shown the round that we play, or we, we were very successful with, with that bait set up in the lower stack. And of course, you know, to some extent, that was a reaction from Astralis. They l uh, knew the rotation of Na'Vi down into that lower position. And have they scared Na'Vi from going there now? Now do you Astralis stack the upper bomb site, expecting Na'Vi to do something different? Well, looks like Na'Vi might be doing something different here. We'll see the initial HD grenades as they take control of Lobby and Radio and Squeaky looking for pushes from Astralis. And indeed, Astralis have a, an upper setup here. Zipex taking quite some damage. But still, ever dangerous. He's not dead yet. And so he will be in a, pr a problem no matter what his health is. All right then. Do Astralis start to fish for information? Okay, it looks like we have the Wall of Smokes outside, so even on a round such as this, Na'Vi have been forced to give the maximum respect to their opponent. Oh, look at that counter smoke from Glaive. That is going to ruin the timing of Na'Vi. He was standing in main that entire time, Glaive, with his CZ out, and he has been waiting for this Wall of Smokes. He can stop them from advancing towards Secret. Now, with the time it takes that smoke to disappear, 
There could be two, three, five Astralis players on those secret stairs. Do Navi abandon what they planned to do previously, or do they continue? Now it's the guessing game. Now they have to wonder, where are the CTs positioned? So many close corners on Nuke, you're pretty much guaranteed to lose some people in a round such as this. Yeah, that smoke is absolute genius indeed. And there's 30 seconds for Na'Vi to move now. They are really being played like a fiddle with that one smoke that Glaive put down. The impact could be enormous because Na'Vi won't have time to check for everything. It's going to be chaos moving into this lower site. There is less than 20 oh seconds going into the plant on the lower bomb site. Electronic gets a quick double, but Zipex is positioned to try to stop the plant. That's all he has to do. Stop the plant. Edward takes him down. Eight seconds to plant the bomb. Can they stop it? Five seconds. Is that bomb going to go down in time? Oh, I don't know if there's time here to plant the bomb. Oh! Oh no! Oh my god. I could barely watch. I could barely watch. That smoke. That is terrifying. That's, yeah, that smoke, high, exactly. High that smoke. Value smoke ever. What now? That is the what now smoke. And the answer is, I don't know what now. And, and for, you know, for those of you thinking, you, how know, do you How do you lose an anti force buy by timeout? Well, that's the thing, like, to, to those people wondering, you know, what, you know, why is it that, that why didn't you just go through that smoke? Well, Navi didn't have any map control, and the rota CT rotations are so quick on this map that it's a complete guessing game, as you mentioned, James, for the Ts. You know, there could be loads of CTs behind that in all of these setups. You want to make it a sure thing, and you have to make that hard decision. Do we just go on a gamble and maybe get absolutely taken down by these CZs, or do we try to play a safer route when that smoke goes away and then just have no time? It's, it's actually chaos either way. Yeah, that is, te that is terrifying. They're just outmaneuvering the entire time. I'm just glad there were no Astralis plays in the show match. I don't know about you. <laughs> but this is pretty damn scary. That said, Na'Vi have AK-47s out. And seven rounds is still doable. Yes. Seven rounds is still doable. But their margin for error is continuing to get smaller and smaller here on the first map of Nuke, which was the pick of Astralis. Yes, and you love to see it. Dupree out with the auto shotgun. Often see the shotguns in play on the upper bomb site of Nuke. It's always... A favorite, and we can see Device having fun with a very good angle there, just playing very safe with the AWP, waiting for Navi to emerge. Navi are playing a slow round here, just trying to cross their T's, dot their I's, make sure that they are getting map control safely. I feel like a uh, an also shotgun should always have a first sticker on because he revolutionized the use of that weapon in ways that other people simply cannot emulate. Now. I don't know if that was the plan for that smoke. I don't know if it was supposed to go, if it's supposed to be there so it goes through the wall or if or what that was, but. It either looked like a complete mistake or a setup indeed. Or maybe he just clicked mouse one by accident. Anyway, we've got just shy of a minute for Na'Vi to walk into the Gatling gun. That is Zipex, and again, Ooh. it's a bait setup, but device does not hit the mark this time. And oh, we can't stick around for too long. You can see simple, almost. Had device in his clutches. Zipex though with another off angle indeed, just falling back, falling back, spotted, forced out into position. Trade is had. 35 seconds to plant the bomb, and the auto shotgun now comes into play as Navi desperately and quickly try to get themselves on that bomb. But Dupree opens the door. That's all he has to do. And now there's a huge threat and presence in the control room side of the lower bomb site. Zeus goes looking for it, but how much time is Dupree killing here? Opening the door just to try and delay the plant, but there is cover. Dupree got to go around the corner now, jumping because he knows he's close to the shotgun. He has advantages. There we go. Black, black. Two more T's to find. Man advantage for Astralis. They don't have a kit on the players who are alive at the moment. Perhaps there is one on the floor. An AK has been collected by Dupree. A Molotov. Simple may have to do a lot here. Navi have almost abandoned the site. Edward looking towards control. The other side, you can do a lot more from that. That side, which is currently on fire. That bomb is so far ticked at the moment. They're going for a 10-second defuse now. Oh, and there it is. The cover is enough. Simple was compromised. And Astralis lose. They're going to steal, sorry, another round. 14 to 6. This is all Astralis on you. Yeah, that's heartbreaking, that round from Na'Vi. They definitely had a solid uh, shot to make that one work. But you, again, you have to credit Dupree just with that auto shotgun. It didn't even, he could have just had a knife. And again, had huge impact with just knowing how to play his presence and how much of a threat that actually was. And he's obviously does upgrade to that AK in the end. And Dupree has been, I mean, everyone on Astralis has just powered up, it seems, as time has gone on since Magix joined the team. And 14 to 6 now, there is almost no room at all for Nardi to make a mistake as they try to make this work with the AKs. Limited utility. 
And looks like Astralis are ready. There is a smoke drop by Dupree. They need to go through that glaive outside, still leading by example. 17 kills now, along with Dupree. Plenty of players seen around the hut. And again, just so dominant from Astralis. Look at a desperation there. Zeus just bouncing through, but this is not Super Mario Brothers. And Simple will be left on his own, one versus four. Does he think about the championship slipping away from him? Again, this is the pick of Astralis, so they may expect to win this in three. So this may not be uh, mentally too defeating for them if this is to continue like this until Astralis win the map. Definitely, I think, you know, Overpass is is such a home territory for them. They're so very strong there, Na'Vi, that they can get a very strong reset into that one. But this is, this is the hardest way, for sure, for them to start against Astralis. On a nuke, and there it is. Map points for Astralis, 15 for them, 6 for Na'Vi. And Na'Vi's money absolutely sucks. Well, well, well. Not how you want to start a major final, that's for sure. Even if you know your opponent has a big advantage. The first map of a best of three series and Astralis are firmly at map points and they've got plenty of them. Navi less than half the score of their opponent. Deploying some grenades outside are the T side. Zipex around the ramp, Glaive on the outside or secret. And there is the wall. No counter smoke this time from Astralis. But what else do they have up their sleeve? Astralis is like the worst magician. Every time they do a trick, somebody dies. <laughs> Oh, the Vice has positioned himself with that orb towards that secret position. And Electronic is closest to it. Are there any setups here for Na'Vi to try with their limited utility? They have some flashbangs to maybe get a frag here for Electronic. Looks like the Vice is in a very safe position that he can just back away safely if he gets flashed. So we'll have to see if this one works out. Will there be a flash on his angle? The Vice now edging forwards. Electronic, he has been stellar so far for Na'Vi. Can he make it work? Oh, it's a miss from the Vice. But Electronic is still alive. There goes the grenade to delay them, uh, but Astralis, they know exactly where the T's are at the moment. Still so scary to try and punish the Vice, because how many times have you seen one CT holding an angle, takes a shot, kills or otherwise, falls back, and you chase after him, you run straight into another one who gets a free kill. You just don't know. And here he is again. Grenades to follow up as well. Two players left now between Astralis and the first map, and there goes Simple as well. Three kills for Device, and Edward can't do anything about it either. That is new, firmly, very firmly taken by Astralis. 1-0 now in this series. What a performance from Astralis on their home map. Would you expect anything less? They have been incredible this entire tournament. We saw their chemistry, they saw, we saw their study with the triple nades. Classic Astralis. We saw just how on point they are individually, how they can auto-correct with that talent that they have on the lineup. It is a fantastic way for them to start off, but Na'Vi, a lot for them to answer for. A lot indeed, and we'll find out if they can do it after the break.